Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You... What you realize about success is that a lot of the things that people speak about in regards to success, it is cliche. It is cliche for a reason. It's cliche because it's the truth. And it sounds so obvious and so easy. It is not. Welcome back to The Entrepreneurial You. I'm your host, Henneka Watkins Porto. Today's episode is brought to you by Bookophilia, Peak Performers. Are you looking for a space that fosters a peaceful and productive working environment for writing and multifaceted creative expression? Then, Bookophilia is the place to be. Today's guest is the CEO and founder of Edufoca Limited, an e-learning web application for students at the Kirwan Examination Council, CXC, and Grade 6 Achievement Test, GSET Levels. Featured on the BBC, he was a speaker at President Obama's Global Entrepreneurship Summit at Stanford University in 2006. He is a tech trailblazer, revolutionizing the approach to education in Jamaica. It's my pleasure to welcome Gordon Swaby to The Entrepreneurial You. Welcome, Gordon. Hey, Henneke. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. So before we get cracking, I have a fun question for you. And here goes. What crazy activities do you dream of trying someday? Um, I guess it depends on what you consider crazy. Uh, I definitely want to go skydiving. I've yet to do that. Um, I want to, I want to try snowboarding. I want to snowboard off a mountain. Um, yeah, I'd say those are just, right, you know, just right off the top of my head. I'd say those are two crazy things that I'd love to try. But you know what? For some people, that's probably not crazy. That's just another day in their life. Right, right, um, right. Yeah, but I'd say those are two crazy things. And yeah. given, given the rate at which you're going, I'm sure these are things that you will try in the very, very near future. No, absolutely. I mean, it's not something that's way out. It's definitely something I can do in the short term. All right. So I want to now get straight into Edufocal. Give us some insight. You know, when you started, why you started. Give us some insight. So I started working on Edufocal actually in 2011, late 2011. Um, around November 2011, and uh, we launched officially on March 15, 2012. So we actually celebrated our fifth birthday um, earlier this week. Um, and it's been a, an amazing half a decade. You know, I can't believe that so much time has passed, uh, but it's, it's been a great journey. Um, just to explain what Edifocal is, I mean, you touched on a little bit of that earlier, but, you know, we use, we borrow elements or methods from video gaming and we implement it um, into the learning process, right? So, you know, you have two core activities when you're playing video games. It's the leveling of system and, you know, there's a leaderboard. So in almost any game that you're playing, there's a leaderboard, right? Because those are just two core elements of, of competing and playing a game. So what we do is that we offer over 15,000 test prep questions for students. They pay a subscription fee to access our service and they start answering questions. Once they're answering the questions, they're earning experience points. Well, once they're answering the questions correctly, they earn experience points and they're leveling up and they're winning prizes while they're leveling up and then they're being ranked on the leaderboard. And that's really, really, really fun for um, students, especially younger students. They find it um, just very, very interactive and captivating. And, you know, we're really happy that, you know, we've had such a great five years, of course, with, ta- with, with some challenges. Um, but really, I'd say that it's been a, a fun journey and we're really, really looking forward to the next five. All right. So at the conceptualization stage, take us back. How did you know that this model would actually be effective and, you know, you would actually be where you are today? Well, if I'm being honest, I didn't. Um, in <laughs> fact, we did no, we did no surveys before. I mean, because I started when I, so I'm 20, I'm 26 now. I started at Google when I was 21. Um, and, you know, it didn't cross my mind at the time to do any kind of testing to see if students would be interested. I kind of just went out on a limb and, you know, built this application and then looked for feedback afterwards. But I'm, I'm, I don't remember who said it, but, you know, there's a story where I think it's one of the automotive um, companies that said, you know, if they asked, if they did, if they did, um, if they spoke to their users and got feedback, they'd say that they want, um, you know, 
better, you know, a better horse and carriage, a faster horse and carriage. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say that people would have wanted um, vehicles, you know. So it's, I guess, I guess in that sense, we build something that people probably wouldn't have even thought about um, as being useful. Our students wouldn't have thought about it. Um, know that we've brought it to market. It, I guess it seems like an obvious thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, if, you know so I'm saying, if I'm going to be honest with you, we didn't do any of those things. I think I, I kind of was, it was a shot in the dark and I was, I was pretty lucky. Um, I know you've had major successes, right? And I'm going to ask you to speak to some of those a little later on. But I want you to take take us through the the failures, if as it were, that you would have experienced along the way. So when we started out, um, we anticipated that we would have gotten a lot of traction from teachers because it actually was supposed to be um, teacher and student centric. Um, teachers were supposed to play a big part in the process. So our original plan, for example, it was that teachers would come on, they'd add their questions, their content, and based on the based on the engagement of the content, then they'd be compensated that way, right? So if you're a teacher on, on the platform and students are engaging your um, engaging your content in a big way, then you know that is how much that would determine how much you're being paid at the end of the month. But then we we realized when we started going out talking to teachers, we realized a lot of teachers weren't trained to use computers or um, or they weren't interested or they you know just they were indifferent to the entire thing. So we had to shift that model a little bit and focus more on it being student centric. So that was in some sense a big a big shift for us or a pivot mm-hmm. into focusing on on on, on something else. Um, and that was my mistake. That was my bad. We should have focused. Um, or we should have at least went out and spoke, spoken to the teachers first uh, to get feedback from them regarding whether or not that would be something that they'd be interested in. So I'd say that would be one of my big quote-unquote failures. And I'm saying quote-unquote failures because I don't really believe in failure. Right, it was um, an opportunity, I really. <laughs> and I, as I see everything. Yeah, exactly. I, I see that and everything else as a lesson um, as, and as a learning process. And it was really a learning process for me um, from very, very early out. Um, so yeah, I'd say that that's been one of our big things. I think also, I mean, there've been a bunch of things that I think are stored in my head, but <laughs> another thing I'd say is that I hired too early and I hired the wrong people. Hmm. Um, so I wasted a lot of money on, I wasted a lot of money on learning. So I guess it's not really wasting money, but that was a learning process. Um, for me, it's, I think I was caught up in the hype initially where, you know, you start your company, you just want to hire people and say so you have a big team, mm-hmm. but then you realize that you have this huge um, bill at the end of the month. You have to compensate these people for their work and it wasn't something that I needed to do at that time because all that was needed for me, um, all the things that we needed initially, I could have done myself, which would mean that I would have saved a lot of money. So, you know, it's, it's, it was a learning process uh, and that's it. Those are some of the um, important lessons that I learned very, very early out. And I'm happy that I learned those lessons then because if I learn them at another time, it may have been at a more crucial time. And, and very costly, be right? And very and even more costly. Exactly. Right. So in putting your exactly. team together, right? Um, what what are now currently the, the elements of a team that you definitely look towards when you're building your team? What we look for really are people who are committed to change, committed to working on something that is not easy, but it's rewarding work and it's fulfilling work, right? Um I think I am I'm I'm a little bit biased and I I prefer to work with younger people, um, people that are not as hardened in their ways. Um, you know, so I'd say that, you know, I look for people who, who can take initiative, people who are, you know, they're go getters. And, and and I mean even in fact I look for entrepreneurial people, people who if they're not you know, if they weren't working with me, they'd probably be, you know, uh, doing a venture on their own. So you know, I'd say those are, um, those are some of the key attributes that I look for in potential um, um, team members. And I mean, we'll be doing some hiring very soon. So hopefully somebody who, you know, fits these attributes will, you know, listen and reach out at some point. All right. Um, before we even go any further, Gordon, because I know you've been talking and piquing the interest of our community, I want you to leave your social with, you know, with us, share your, your Twitter handle and, and so on so that we can tweet at you. On Facebook, I'm facebook.com slash Gordon um, it's, it's my It's my full name everywhere. Instagram.com slash Gordon And of course, Twitter, where I'm most active, is twitter.com slash Gordon So, yeah, that's the, those are my main um, social media. Yeah, those are my main social media places. So you spoke earlier of um, getting, well, you, a lesson learned. Instead of focusing on the teachers, you know, you really should have gone to focus on the students. 
And so you're now student-centric, as, as you put it. How did you get the buy-in from these students? Before we got the buy-in from the students, we had to get buy-in elsewhere. Uh, because we, at the end of the day, we needed teachers. Mm-hmm. It's just that the way that we were engaging teachers changed. Mm-hmm. Um, and a big part of all of that for me was um, getting credibility in the market and in the space. So I realized that, you know, people like the media and they saw the media as validation for whatever it is that they're doing. People take the media seriously and that gives you credibility. Um, awards also give you credibility um, and it shows that, you know, you know, it's, it's essentially validation too for people, not even validation for me per se, but for others. And um, people see that as, oh, you know, he's important or whatever it is. So I remember early out, one of the, <clears throat> the first big award I ever got um, was the, the, the PSOJ's 50 under 50 award. Um, that was a couple of months after I started Educal, and that really set things in motion for me. Um, as I, I have to shout out Sandra Glasgow, who encouraged me at the time to apply for the award. Um, and you know, she was running PSOG at the time as its as its um, CEO. And we applied, and well, I applied, and I got through, and you know, it was a great event. I, had, I got a lot of publicity and exposure from it. And that really was my first big start into, um, you know, getting Edufocal out there, giving Edufocal more credibility. So once we started popping up in the media, appearing in the newspaper, teachers and schools that <clears throat> weren't interested in engaging us initially started engaging us afterwards. <clears throat> so, it, you know, it worked really, really well. Um, and that has been my strategy in some regard from, <laughs> from day one. And of course, you know, that credibility has grown in terms of, you know, all the places that we've, you know, we've been featured. We've been featured on the BBC, as you mentioned earlier. We've been featured in the UK Guardian. Um, we've been featured on Virgin. Richard Branson has mentioned us in articles that he has written. Um, you know, we've been featured. We've been featured locally, of course, uh, in both the Gleaner, the, you know, the, the Observer. Um, in fact, we even have a partnership, a long-standing partnership with the Jamaica Observer. Uh, we've been featured um, regionally in the Trinidad, um, you, you know, in Trinidad Guardian, in the Trinidad Express, and so on. So you know, all of that has been really, really good, and helped to push Edufocal forward and give us more credibility in the marketplace, especially as a young founder. You know, I mean, for some, yes, yeah, so for somebody who started that young. Uh, although you're you're student centric, you had to get that buy-in from the from the teachers in order for them to to influence and the media did play a great role all right we're going to take a break right here and then come back and talk some more about your successes and your expansion plans all right peak performers success is something that we gradually work towards as an end goal but we need to be in the right environment to make it happen um, book a Feeler is dedicated to providing a space for book, coffee and tea lovers, creatives, educators, students and professionals who want ideas, innovation and inspiration. They have a variety of high quality books, a cafe, events such as book launches, signings and art exhibitions and professional services uniquely tailored to your needs, culture and tastes. Their environment provides for the full literary arts experience, allowing for multifaceted creative expressions. Find them on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Bookophilia. Welcome back. Welcome back. Gordon. Right. You have mentioned briefly before we went to, went to that break about some of the successes you've had, you know, um, featured on the BBC, Richard Branson, even personally mentioning you in articles that he's done and all these uh, these media coverage and, and so on. But I want you to share with us a little more uh, because you're just 26 years old and a lot of 62 years old, you know, to play on the numbers um, in their lifetime wouldn't have accomplished a mere percentage of what you've already done so far at a very early age, right? So I want you to kind of uh, guide us into what you think um, led our account for this level of success. And if you want to even share some more of your success with us and what account for the level of success that you've managed to have at this stage. So, I mean, you said just 26. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, wow, I'm 26. I'm 26 now, so I feel old. Um, but of course, relatively speaking, I am not old. I mean, well, so for me, I I would say that being focused has helped. Having a plan has helped, and surrounding myself with the right people has helped. Um, I think a lot of people discount the value of good advice. Mm-hmm. I mean, because at the end of the day, there's bad advice and there's good advice. Good advice has helped me, you know, in a in a big way. And 
your mistakes that I would have made um, if I did, you know, if, if I didn't listen to people, I'd have made some really big mistakes, and it would have probably been the end of Edu Focal. So, you know, I'm very, very happy that I surrounded myself with the right people. One of the first things that I did when I started the company was to have a board of directors. So, corporate governance for me has been a big thing from day one. Um, I, I, I essentially call them parental um, guidance in, 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 in the workplace because, you know, individually and collectively, they have much more experience than I do. So, you know, it was especially important for me to lean on the experience um, of my board members, particularly my, my chairman, Peter Levy, who runs you know, the largest insurance company in Jamaica, BCIC. So, you know, all of that has been extremely helpful, the kind of support that I, I've gotten from him <clears throat> and my other board members. You know, I couldn't pay for it. It's not something that I could pay for. So, you know, those things are so important in business. And I say to, uh, to young entrepreneurs all the time, and even old entrepreneurs, um, that it's, it's in your day-to-day -day trying to earn money, it's so, it's, you know, it's easy to get caught up in, you know, I just need to earn, I need to earn, I need to pay those bills. But at the end of the day, you need to set the right kind of foundation or, or else you're always going to be in that mode of, I need to, you know, meet this, this month's, um, <clears throat> and I need to be able to pay the, the bills at the end of this month. So you have to position yourself that, yes, you're trying to earn the money to pay your bills at the end of the month. We also need to put things in place to ensure that long-term, medium and long-term, you're in a more sustainable place. And a big part of getting there is putting in the right foundation, getting the right people, getting in the right kind of support and so on. Mm -hmm. So, so mentorship, um, having having a plan, uh, laying the right foundation. Those are three of the things that I, I heard, you know, picked up from you. Now we're going to move into and pacing yourself. Right? And pacing yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, go ahead. I'd say, you know, I'd, because so I would say, for example, that I could have been further along than I am now, five years in. But I know, you know, or I knew that I knew what I could take on at a certain point in my life and what I couldn't take on. So I had to pace myself and ensure that I was going at the rate that I can manage, um, you know, because that is very important. Or else you crash and burn, mm -hmm. you know. Because burning out is also a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of burning so, out, I know, was going to head... That's my last point. <laughs> I was going to head into ex expansion plan, but you talk about burnout, you know? Um, what is it that, you know, pre uh, prevents you from... Because at the, the, the level of which you're operating, it's quite easy for you to be burnt out at this stage. What is preventing you from Absolutely. being burnt out? Absolutely. <laughs> How do you stay, you know, alert and in the <sighs> moment and focused and not be burnt out? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I mean, I have a great family. I try to balance my life well. I take breaks. Um, I try to go to at least a new, one, one new place every month. You know, there are some days I just rest because what I'm doing requires a lot of mental and physical work. You know, visiting schools, talking to people, you know, I talk a lot, you know, so you have to, I have to, there are days, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was there about to say, hold on, to hold, hold on a bit, I, I was about to say that, um, yeah, you talk a lot and it has been paying off because you've, you've been on all these different platforms uh, with, you know, not just in Jamaica, but all over, right, so yeah, continue. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I, I, and I mean, I, you know, at least once per year, I, I am engaged by some um, huge entity to come and speak, you know, somewhere, whether it's the World Bank or the IDB or whoever. Um, so I guess I'm talking and I'm not talking foolishness. And, you know, what I'm saying actually makes sense. And I'm actually doing good work. Um, but, you know, so to, I would say that, you know, to stave off bur burnout, it's important to, to find that balance. It's important to indulge in things that are different from the norm. And you know what? You can actually get new ideas that way. Sometimes I'll just sit with strangers and I'll have conversations with strangers. Um, sometimes I change up my routine a bit and do things that I don't normally do. Um, you know, so people who I would normally talk, to, I just don't have comments, like students. I just sit on they don't. They, I mean, they don't know who I am. You know, I sit and I just reason with them about certain things, and you know, that's a nice little change up or shift in how I do things. And I learn a lot from having conversations with people. So dialogue is very, very important to me, and and, and communication is at the foundation of everything that we do in life as human beings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it's very, very important. Dialogue and communication and being, being able to articulate yourself well is very, very important. People need to understand what it is that you're saying to them. And there should be no ambiguity um, on your part. 
You know, I like what you say about, um, you know, just having some random conversations with some random people, as it were. You know, um, I find that too, per- on, a, on, a, on a personal level, to be quite effective. Just talking to people, I, because ideas are everywhere. And you, they, they, um, was it Desiderato that says, okay. listen to the ignorant because they too have their story, even the dull and ignorant. So, and, and I'm just using, you know, ignorant in, in the sense, you know, quoted there. Um, because some persons may think, oh, you know, um, I can't speak to uh, students because, you know, they won't understand what I'm saying or I can't get any ideas from them. But then I think what you're doing is actually excellent. So now let's move into your expansion plan. (laughs) If I can only touch on some of it, I can't tell you all of it. Um, We have some big surprises, you know, over the next year and a half, two years and so on. Um, But I mean, I, I would, all I'd say to you is that we intend to control the pipeline. Um, that is a big goal of ours. Um, and it may sound a little bit ambiguous, but that's all I can say in that regard. But I mean, for the things that are out there, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we are expanding to, we're expanding to, to Africa. I just came back from um, Nigeria in, in December. I had a great visit there, um, developed some strong relationships, some strong partners. And, you know, we're really looking forward to doing some good work there. Lagos alone is 21 million people. Mm-hmm. And I mean, mm-hmm. with the right connections and the right part, with the right partnerships in Nigeria, there's a lot of things that we can do. I mean, so I'm, I guess I'm seeing it here for the first time, but, um, we're, you know, Airtel, which is the second largest telecoms in Nigeria, they're looking to partner with us, uh, um, you know, and that can have far reaching, um, impact, um, you know, for our operations in, in Nigeria. Awesome. Uh, Congratulations yeah, so on that. that. <laughs> Thank you. You know, but outside of that, we're you know we're, we're our heads are still down in work. We're still developing new features for Edufocal. One key thing that we're you know we're going to be doing in the future is offline a bit. You know, the ability to use our platform without an internet connection. Um, that's going to be a big step for us. Developing in you know other features, for example, the ability for students to compete with each other on the Edufocal platform live. So it's like you're taking a test with the student. Two students are taking a test at the same time, and then they're going to be seeing their results side by side. You know, those kind of things we're developing and working on. Um, you know, our operation, we have we have a lot of things going on at once. As, you know, and you know, as I said to you, it's very very important for me to manage my my life, and you know, because if not, then I'm definitely going to have burnout. You know, I also have a great girlfriend, um, and you know that 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 really helps. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So on that note, yeah, on that yeah. spicy note, um, one piece of advice for young entrepreneurs or those even, you know, with a mere idea and wanting to enter the field of entrepreneurship. I would say to set goals for yourself, set realistic goals. I, I like the acronym SMART, SMART goals. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. It's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Um, you know, a lot of the... What, what you realize I, what you realize about success is that a lot of the things that people speak about in regards to success it is cliche it is cliche for a reason it's cliche because it's the truth and it sounds so obvious and so easy but it is not it is not I mean at the end of the day for you for example to commit to yourself to getting up every single morning and doing the same thing um, you know just being disciplined about it it's hard. How many things can you think of that you can get up every single day and, and do it over and over? It's very, very hard. You know, it gets monotonous, it gets boring, and, you know, it's, 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 it's hard for a lot of people. So dedicating yourself to something and a craft um, is extremely important, I'd say, um, and just being focused. And have, have, have good, have, I'd say have good mentors. Have good mentors, too. That's a big thing. That's really, really important. Peak performers, you've heard it. It's we've been chatting, hanging with Gordon Swaby of Edufocal Limited. He has been such an inspiration, and I'm sure that you want to join me in saying thanks to him as well. So, Gordon, gonna ask you to leave again with us your social media contact. So you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and definitely on Twitter at my name. So it's Gordon Swaby, and that's my name for all the platforms. You just punch Gordon Swaby in. And you'll find me. Thank you so much. You have been an inspiration. And I wish you every success in everything that you do. Thank you, Hanika. Thank you for having me. That's it, my peak performers. We have come to the end of another inspiring episode of The Entrepreneurial You. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Giving you some extra info here. If you really love the Jamaican culture and want to express that love by wearing t-shirts, then head right over to patwaapparel.com. That's P-A-T-W-A. 
A-P-P-A-R-E-L dot com, patoapparel dot com. Until next time, I'm Henneke Watkins Porto. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. What good? Walk good.